Say on streets. Our streets. Say on streets. Our and made it. Right. Made it. Whose streets? Our streets. What up, what up, what up? This your boy Bass, and y'all tuned in to another episode of Ian's Podcast. Man, in this episode particular, man, we gonna be touching on a rapper that the younger generation might not know too much about, but I know if you in that 25 and older group, you know about that song, Riding Dirty. You know about that Houston wave that came with that screwed up music. Man, <laughs> y'all know exactly what I'm talking about, man. Uh, Chameleonaire, Chameleonaire, however you want to pronounce it. Chameleonaire, Chameleonaire. Um, you feel me? Known for the song Riding Dirty. Uh, he had a few other hits too, as well. But he also came out with that, you know, that that Paul Wall, um, that Mike Jones. Who? Mike Jones. That Mike Jones um, era. You feel me? Switch House and you feel me? That whole screwed up click. Um, you feel me? They also had, you know, Slim Thug, you know, uh, you feel me? He came out during a time where, you feel me, Houston music was on top, and they was doing their thing. They was doing their thing for real, for real. And he had a, um, a smash hit, you feel me? Uh, he even won, you feel me, the 2006 Grammy Awards for Best Rap Performance by a duo group. Uh, but... We don't want to talk too much about his music. We gonna talk more about um, Chameleonaire as a as an entrepreneur. You feel me? And what big move he did last year. And I know, yeah, y'all gonna be like, damn, what you bringing up something from last year? I feel like it's, it's last year, but it's something that we need to be thinking about that we could do currently. You feel me? And I, and I understand. Um, like I say, everybody, you know, and every, you know, everybody got their own type of situation that they're in. You feel me? But. We use our voice to, you feel me, kind of help and not kind of to help empower, but also, you know, get t- testimonies and, you feel me, shed light on what's going on to help you get through your current circumstance. So right now, um, you feel me, there's probably a female uh, woman, you feel me, of color, you feel me, uh, it's probably a black beautiful queen out there that's embarking on her journey of being, uh, you feel me, an entrepreneur, and that's really on that startup grind, you probably got a dog ass idea, dog ass business model, and you probably got everything it takes besides the actual capital, and that's where, you feel me, if you're coming from, you feel me, especially if you black, let's keep it all over your honey, if you black, um, I ain't gonna say eight times out of ten, but it just it's a very high percentage that you coming from a short end of the stick where you come into the ball game where you don't have the same funding or back end that somebody else may come in with. So because you coming in with that disadvantage, you already short handed when they I mean they already the statistics say that most startups fail within the first three years due to either poor structure poor organization like just 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 uh just the whole organization just communication just poor business model um or just lack of funding you feel me they run out of money or you, you feel me they didn't have enough money uh but long story short you feel me uh can uh Get millionaire, you feel me? He teamed up with uh, E40. Shout out to E40 out there in the Bay. That's another dude um, that we gonna talk about in a, you know in another uh, podcast episode. But he's also a fellow entrepreneur. But these two teamed up with a portfolio company called Republic. You feel me? And he invested twenty five thousand into a startup fi- um, <clears throat> founded by a woman. You feel me? A color. 
And to me, I feel like that's pretty dope, especially when you start thinking about the image that's behind hip hop music and rappers in general. You feel me? Everybody always get to talking about how rappers always talking uh, talking about bitches and hoes, and how rappers are degrading women and stuff like that. But you got a rapper right here um, that's really not being publicized. You don't really see him uh, trending on Facebook or Instagram. Everybody now, you know, talking about him. He ain't getting interviewed. Um, like that But he is doing interviews But he doing interviews in markets where People from his own culture ain't really Getting a chance to you know soak Up what it is that he's actually doing And the reason why I say that is because you could go Find out about what uh, Chimillionaire uh, I, I, I can call him Chimillionaire Because he be saying in his rap But Chimillionaire is doing Um on like you know uh platforms like yahoo finance now let's be real man a lot of us ain't really going on yahoo finance to learn about you feel me black entrepreneurs that are really doing their thing uh that's not really a platform that's really you know geared towards our our um our you know our demographic honestly so utilizing my voice and our platform like me being in the uh the finance game and you know in the stocks and learning how to invest and stuff like that i'm going out there to actually go seek the information you feel me and that's when i came across that i'm like damn you feel me like i know somebody out there was trying to help empower these black sisters get started um and just you know and just really just uh get just get the ball rolling you feel me um and I know somebody out there, like, as far as black men, because it's not really too much being said in the media about black men that's empowering black women. You feel me? Like, I don't understand why, but as a media company, we're going to take full advantage and we're going to put that shit out there. And that's going to be one of our big agendas because right now you see on social media, it's a lot of hype uh, and a lot of conversation being started. And I feel like it's some agenda behind this, too. That's um that's basically saying, like, uh, black men got to start protecting black women and you got people picking sides but it's like you feel me but like hold on now let's pay attention to the wins we do got sometimes we don't give credit to the wins we do got it's individuals out here that's doing that how about we shed some light on them and then we just follow suit you feel me we don't necessarily got to do what they doing but then we can be like oh shit like this can inspire me to go think about damn maybe i got a girlfriend or something who's always talking to you know she doing her nails and right now she a she a uh a soul proprietor which mean basically she taking on all the liabilities baby let me go ahead this next paycheck i'm gonna go pay for your llc you feel me brothers like for real for real my guy like you feel me let's start thinking like that you feel me that's another way that you could put your lady on or it don't even gotta be your lady it could just be it could be your sister anybody like that you feel me i'm talking to the women in my family and just the women that like i know be like hey man you feel me like if you got a hustle man go ahead and do that um and I like that uh, Chameleon there, he really, you know, and also rapper E-40, let's not, you feel me, let's not discredit E-40, E-40 is in on this whole thing too, um, but he was one of the ones that also did it too, man, but Chameleon there, like, he made, he made it big, you feel me, and not even off of just doing the music, that is one artist that if you are a music artist and you listen to this, or just an entrepreneur that's thinking about, like, how do I flip what I'm currently doing into what I ultimately want to do? You can also look at his blueprint too. He went from being a rapper to being a full entrepreneur, like venture capitalist. You feel me? Like from investing into the Lyft app early on, which you know he made bank on, to also just investing in the tech early on, um, which he knew that lacked a lot of people of color. And I'm going to be real, like what us doing this whole podcast, everything like that, man, it is not a lot of people of color. Which I don't, honestly, people always say people of color, black people. <laughs> I know there's some, you know, there's some political, you know, around words. I shouldn't say black, or I shouldn't say nigga, I shouldn't say certain things. I understand. I have a platform, and I should um, really, really uh, own up to that, and really, uh, you know. But honestly, black. I, I love the power of black. I love black. I love what black stand for. So I'm gonna always say black. I just want to just put that in there, just real fast. Um, but long story short, um, but when it come down to 
uh, the tech industry, there is a gap between black people that are being involved, like as far as being coders and stuff like that, but also on the investor side, you feel me? And when our culture, we ain't gonna move on anything that we don't know about or we haven't seen somebody else have success in. So therefore, if somebody was to come to you like, hey man, I'm about to try to start up this company, you feel me? I'm about to try to make an app, and you be like, bro, I ain't never see you get down with no computer or anything like that. A lot of times we're gonna be you know, on, on like, kind of like, you know, reluctant to kind of really invest into something like that, you feel me, but now I feel like in this day and age, we gotta, um, take those, take those investments, uh, even if it's yourself, like, you feel me, like, if you wanna go make an app, you know, um, learning how to code yourself and being able to go make your app, you feel me, a lot of individuals be talking to me like, dog, how am I gonna start a company if I work 40 hours a week and I'm a parent? It's like, depend on what your business is. That's what you really gotta get down to. Um, and I ain't gonna go too far into that, you feel me, that's something completely different. We gonna go backtrack, we gonna go back to chameleon there and just basically just looking at his blueprint of how he got to where he's at to where he's helping empower uh black queens uh upon their journey of uh you know just you know doing startups you feel me being an entrepreneur and that's something that we lack especially in america right now you feel me and especially with all this shit going on we got to get that black economy right and um self-efficient and start with our queens too it can't just be the guys it got to be the queens too so long story short the dude took his rap money you feel me and then just rely on rap money he took the rap money flipped that and invested into uh you know just various different startups and companies and he was able to win big off that but taking that he took that money again and then now he reinvesting it into his own you feel me so what i see him from his blueprint also too is the art of flipping you feel me flipping your money but also realizing you feel me the value of what you investing into you feel me? He went from music, him being a part of the hip hop culture and things of that nature. You feel me? He was fully invested in what was going on around him. You feel me? Everybody, you know, he got Paul Wall, you got Slim Thug, Mike Jones. You got, you know, it's a, Houston was on during that time, and he took that and he took that and ran with it. You feel me? But he also, after that, you feel me? After he made him some blood chips, he also took that and invested that into something else. He took that next leap. Um, and a lot of times we hear a lot of individuals talk about Jay Z. Uh, you feel me? Uh, shout out to Nip. You know, much respect, much love to Nip. And not, not, I'm not knocking or discrediting anything like that. But I'm just saying that the scope of uh, black entrepreneurs that made it, basically, that basically like that, like we like look at that made it to that that next level, and not just being a rapper, they're actual business owner or business mogul. Um, I feel like he don't, he's one of them that don't get enough credit. And throughout this whole uh, podcast, we are gonna be sharing light on all that just like how um on drink champs they talking about they try to get your roses while you still alive man we about the hustlers the the ones that's making the most out of their current circumstance because ends is means eating in the streets which to us eating in the streets is when you making the most out of your current circumstance no matter how you doing if you starting a business it always starts at the ground level you're gonna have to print out your business cards you feel me you on the ground level you most likely when you vendor and you in the streets with it you feel me you doing pop-up at shows and things like that you feel me and you're going to these network is you really putting in that groundwork that leg work and that's what we mean by we in the streets with it so i don't really want to talk our ears off to death i just want to share some light on to uh chameleon there you feel me and what he had going on you feel me from his breakout song with ryan dirty taking that money you feel me investing in the uh various tech companies like lyft early on and getting that check up off that and then turning into a full-on mogul and philanthropist star investing back into his own culture now i understand that everybody can't come out with a breakout hit <laughs> like let's be real but like i said like giving an example you might got a uh, um a girlfriend a sister or a home girl that got this dog ass idea or got this dog ass concept but they just need a little help getting in the door and if you was like like, damn, I'll go blow this 150 on these motherfucking all white forces. You can go blow 150 on they um on a future basically, like invest into them. And that might be that little ump that they might be needing because they might only got 150 left and they gotta make that hard decision. Like, do I wanna you know that sacrificing decision where you could just take that 
that off oh, I'll follow them and like make that 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 decision making more easier for them like man go chase your dream you feel me that's why I think a lot of us especially coming from our culture we don't get enough chance to really go chase our dreams we feel like we were forced into like basically happen to survive I gotta make it so if it ain't making if it if you don't see it helping you make ends meet today you don't see the long term goal and for our black queens we need to you feel me like I said you feel me like let's take some pride and you know putting them on just as we put on our brothers we could put on our sisters too so shout out to Chameleon for what he's doing you feel me taking his own money teaming up with e40 another black man you feel me making it in the um, music industry he's been <laughs> e40 we're gonna do an episode about him you feel me because he's been in the game a long time and been able to maintain and sustain himself you feel me and he got that drink called that 40 water yeah <laughs> but uh, uh, uh i'm gonna get back to the whole business side but yeah you feel me just from him having his own liquor from him having his own you know music from doing the music label you know clothing brand you know uh e40 then did it all man he, and he's a part of all um but really like i said man just shedding light on these black entrepreneurs those that are, have taken they blessings and you know just triple that but in this uh particular episode we just want to say shout out to chameleon you feel me shout out to that whole houston wave that he came out with but most definitely shout out to chameleon you feel me from you feel me going from music to tech to you know venture capitalist you feel me and also you feel me going back into his grassroots and start from where he came from you feel me because we all came from a, if you black you came from a black woman right so you know put on for them too you know it's your boy bash y'all tuned in and eating in the streets and this is ends podcast baby we're making the most of our current circumstance let's get it